Cancer, the emperor of all maladies. One out of every three Americans will develop it in their lifetime, resulting in, in the US alone, 1.8 million cases per year. Hi, I'm Aiden, and today we're going to talk about fighting cancer with targeted therapies. To understand how to treat cancer, we must first get a basic picture of how it works. The average human has trillions of cells in their body, meaning injured or worn out cells need to be replaced often. To do this, the body releases growth factors, which bind onto receptors on a cell's membrane and trigger cell division. When mutations in a cell's DNA disrupt any part of this process, cells can grow uninhibited, causing cancer. So how do we treat cancer? Well, imagine there's a fly in your house. You could either shoot it with a shotgun, killing the fly but ruining your house, or you could use a precision heat-seeking dart, killing the fly but saving your house. Which would you pick? I'm guessing most of you picked the latter, but the only problem is until recently, it didn't exist. As you've probably already guessed, the house isn't just any house. It's your body, and the fly is cancer. So what is the shotgun? Well, the shotgun is chemotherapy, and for years it was the only treatment for cancers that had grown or metastasized. Chemotherapy works by targeting fast dividing cells, since cancer is defined by its unregulated growth. However, this means that it also targeted fast dividing normal cells, such as those in hair follicles, the gut, or the immune system. This leads to serious side effects that ruin quality of life. But now, scientists have developed the heat-seeking dart in the form of targeted therapies. In our example, the heat-seeking dart is able to identify the fly based on a unique marker, its heat. In the same manner, targeted therapies are able to distinguish between cancer cells and healthy cells because of unique markers, for example, an excess of a certain protein. Now the tricky part, how exactly does it work? Let's use a common type of targeted therapy, TKIs, or tyrosine kinase inhibitors, as an example. In healthy cells, tyrosine kinase is an enzyme that functions as a receptor on the cell membrane. When growth factors bind to the signal binding sites of two adjacent tyrosine kinase receptors, they dimerize and begin protein phosphorylation, which is basically where they add an extra phosphate to a protein. Think of the phosphate as an on-off switch. This on-off switch method of signaling controls a wide range of cellular functions, including division, growth, and apoptosis. In cancer, faulty receptor tyrosine kinases can send signals to grow or divide even when there is no growth factor. Tyrosine kinase inhibitors work by blocking the active sites of tyrosine kinase, therefore stopping these faulty signals. This halts the growth of cancer. A few things to keep in mind. Targeted therapies do not kill cancer cells, they only stop them from growing. As a result, cancers are constantly mutating to avoid detection, meaning scientists must race to find new ways of identifying them. In the years since its discovery, there have been hundreds of new targeted therapies treating over 15 types of cancers and saving the lives of hundreds of thousands of patients. The field of targeted therapies is new and growing rapidly. Before the discovery of insulin, diabetes was a fatal disease. Now it's become a manageable condition. Targeted therapies are doing the same to cancer. Before long, who knows, cancer may be the emperor no more.